Hello everybody and welcome or welcome back to the second shelf and to the last video about 2023. The best dudes. As you all know, I almost exclusively talk about books by female author on my channel, but that that's the reason for the channel. But that doesn't mean that I don't read male authors. Not as many because they are only limited number of books in my year, but I do read male authors. And once a year, I make the best dudes video, so the best books by male authors. And this year in 2023, um, I have five, five books. Um, the male list of authors or books is always a bit um, nonfiction heavy. Because a lot of times nonfiction books or topics that interest me are written by male author, especially when it comes to science uh, and things like that. But there are two. There are also two. Uh, if you you can see that from the the description below where I list all the books, there are also two fiction books. But I'll start with the nonfiction, and um, I think with the probably special interest, a book that appeal to me a lot because I'm interested in Susan Sontag. She's one of my leading ladies. Um, it, it's probably not for everyone, but if you are interested in her, uh, Benjamin Moses' uh, biography, uh, Sontag, um, published in 2019, and he was rewarded the Pulitzer Prize for biography in 2020. This is definitely worth your while. It is detailed it's about 700 pages of yeah 700 pages of text and yes i know benjamin he's a friend of mine but i wouldn't promote the book on the channel if i didn't think it was really excellent and it is excellent it's you know if you follow my channel that i often have issues with biography because um, it gives you a lot of details and a lot of facts and figures, but no story. But this really tells, for me, a convincing story about Susan Sontag, about her life um, and her work. And she was a difficult woman, I think, but yeah, a an, an fantastically interesting woman as well. Uh, one of my intellectual heroes of uh, the 20th uh, century, for sure. And this bi biography definitely does her justice. So if you're interested in Sontag and her work, I can highly recommend this. Um, the next one was a buddy read with Heidi from my reading life. Yes, I also buddy read <laughs> male authors. Uh, and we decided to read The Silk Roads by Peter Frankopan, which came out, I think, in 2016 or something, 2015. Um, and this is basically what it says on the tin, A New History of the World, um, trying to be less Western-centric. Um, so Peter Frankopan is a historian, and he describes in the introduction, he describes his um, way or his, his, yeah, his journey as a historian, that he realized that the way we, we in the West, uh, in Europe and in the US, how we look at history is very much Western centric. You know, our history started uh, with the Greeks and then came the Romans, and then there was the medieval time, and then there was the Renaissance, uh, Italy, and everything else. And everything came from there. And he made it clear that they, they are, that this is, of course, a faulty way of looking at history. So he had in, I think, 20-something chapters, um, yeah, 22, oh no, 25, sorry. So from early, really early times until uh, the 20th century, he looks at history differently. I have to say his focus is the East. So everything that is East of Rome um, and how much that world uh, with, uh, you know, Istanbul or Constantinople uh, was actually the most Western point of 
what happened, where, where history happened. He did not look at Africa, almost not. So it is still our history of our Western world, but it shows you that the shift to the West with like Athens at the eastern corner of what we think of as quote unquote us is a modern thing and not uh, something that was always there. So it, I thought it was fascinating, very well, uh, well researched, but also very, very engagingly written. So I can highly, highly recommend this one. Um, and the last nonfiction um, is about science. Like I said earlier, if, you, if you're interested in science like me, you will have to read male authors because a lot of uh, science, uh, when it comes to physics in particular, is written uh, by, by male authors. There's still uh, a problem with you know equality in STEM, and that also is reflected in the people who write about it. Um, but I read a fantastic book by Howard Markle, and it was published in 2021, so relatively recently, The Secret Life. And it is about DNA and the discovery, uh, the, the discovery of DNA, 1953, um, the double helix, uh, James Watson as one of the major figures, of course. Was it 2015? Yes, yes. <laughs> um, uh, Francis Crick and James Watson as the two major figures in this new discovery. But this book, as you can see from the cover, is focusing on Rosalind Franklin and her contribution to the discovery of the double helix that was for the longest time really not acknowledged at all. Uh, she died very young. That in addition, she couldn't defend herself anymore because she was already dead uh, uh, in in the in the nineteen fifties. She died from from cancer um, early. She was quite young, but anyway. So this is a fascinating, different look, and it's not um, in any way giving a, um, a picture of Rosalind Franklin as this, you know, only good and no, no edges. To, no, she was, I mean, she had her edges to her character, obviously, like we all do. So it's, it's, I really appreciated that um, uh, the author didn't try to paint this picture of this goody good woman. No. The point is that she was, due to misogyny and sexism in science, she was really um, treated badly by both James Watson and Francis Crick, James Watson in particular. I mean, he seems to be a really, really unpleasant person. Um, but also the system worked like that at the time. And if you watch my video of the best um, books 2023, there is, of course, Kate Zernick is the exceptions about sexism in science. So it didn't change much after the 50s. But anyway, if you're interested in the discovery of DNA and a deeper, a really deep dive into um, who did what and why at that time in the 1950s, this is an excellent, excellent choice. So those are the three uh, non-fiction books. And by the way, the same I said in the uh, best books of 2023 video about non-fiction, it was really difficult for me to pick three because I read excellent, excellent books by male authors, uh, uh, nonfiction books. So, but these these somehow spoke to me in a on on a very deep level. These three, anyway, the fiction was not that difficult because I didn't read that much fiction by male authors. But I have two that I thought were really excellent. Um, and the first one, I have to check the 
uh, the date, of course, is by Kim Yong Ha, Diary of a Murderer, uh, translated from the Korean. Can you see that by Chris Lee? And it was published in 2019 in um, Korea uh, and then in 2020 uh, in the English translation. It's one, two, three, four stories. The first one, the title story, Diary of a Murderer, is the longest one. And I also think the best one. Uh, so it's crime story um, and really inventive and twisted. And um, I'm not a short story fan, as you probably know if you follow my channel. Um, and certainly not when it comes to crime. I did not pick this book myself. It was a, a, a book club pick. And I was already eye-rolling uh, short stories, crime, that, that doesn't work because you need time, you know, for the red herrings and the clues. And But this is excellent. So if you are a crime story reader and you are looking for something a bit different, but excellent crime slash thriller stories, Kim Yong Ha. The Diary of a Murderer. And the last book is probably not a surprise because I already talked about this book. I'm not sure in, in which context, um, but I did uh, talk about this author, and that is Brad Easton Ellis, The Shards, uh, published on the very first day of this year, 1st of January. And I even went to a reading by him here in, in Cologne, which was fantastic, even though the interviewer was a pretentious idiot. But he was funny, despite having heavy jet lag, but he was really funny. And yes, I am a huge fan of Brad Easton Ellis. Um, I think um, he is really funny in his work, really um, different, does not take himself seriously, you know, like the Jonathan Franzen type of taking myself seriously, look at me writing the great American novel, which gives me the, you know, the willies. I know he's not for everyone, and he has a tendency of writing uh, a lot of violent books like, you know, American Psycho, and this is quite violent as well. But I just love, I, I just love the way he thinks in his book. So this is um, Brad Easton Ellis's take on autofiction. <laughs> So he he is right. You you can see the author picture is like when he was really young, nineteen eighty two yearbook from the Buckley School. So he was um, not even 20 uh, because he's born in 1964, if I'm correct. But this is, let me let me tell you. So he's 17, Brett, and he goes to this very fancy school, uh, prep school, a senior at the exclusive Buckley Prep School, when a new student arrives with a mysterious past. Uh, Robert um, is very bright and, but Brad, the young Brad, uh, who has a relationship with a woman, uh, he is in the closet still. Uh, he's not sure about his sexuality, but it's clear that he's gay, like Brad Easton Ellis in real life. And there is this relationship uh, between um, the, his group of very, you know, the bright young people, and then Robert, who is the brightest of the bright, so to speak. And there's also um, a serial killer on the loose uh, who kills people also from the school. That part is certainly not autobiographical. There is, if you, if you know Brad Easton Ellis's biography, there is definitely some, a, a lot of what is in the novel actually happened in his life. He is working on his first book, Less Than Zero, in the in the book. He wants to be a scriptwriter. It he the prep school is in in L.A., so it's the you know the 1980s in Los Angeles, Hollywood. But like I said, it's mainly a really satiric, in my view, a really satirical take on this whole 
auto fiction thing that you constantly are forced by uh, Alice to ask yourself, is this true? Did this really happen? W what does he mean by that? It is, again, there is quite some violence in it, um, which is, I feel, with, uh, with Alice, never gratuitous. It has a meaning, especially because he, uh, he is really interested in how we talk about violence, how we picture violence. It's also this kind of slasher movie feel to the book, uh, like with American Psycho. So I loved it. I will, again, will say this is not for everyone, for sure not. If you have issues with Brad Easton Ellis's work, uh, if you hate American Psycho, you will probably not appreciate that very much. And you will think it's boring or, you know, over the top. And what does it all mean? But if you are, you know, if you have a sweet spot for books like that, I can certainly recommend it. It is a chunky. Um, Yeah, over 500 pages, but I, I really loved every single page of it. So, yeah. And if you ever have a chance uh, to see Brad Easton Ellis' life in a reading or something, take the opportunity and buy a ticket because it's really worth it. He is very sociable, very nice, and very funny. Anyway, those are the five best dudes of 2023. And like I said, this will be the last video looking back um, uh, to the last year. And from now on, it's 24, 2024 all the way. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed my best dudes. As always, I'm looking forward to your comments. It's one of my um, good intentions for 2024 to try to keep up with the comments, you know, in a timely manner. Let's see how that works. But anyway, leave me a comment if you're so inclined, and I'll talk to you all soon in the next one.